Hi guys, I want to talk to you again about your budgeting. I want to talk to you about being a good steward or a good shepherd of what you have, like your household monies and your budget. Um, now, the first thing with a household budget is you need to set up some type of priorities for yourself as far as looking at the month ahead. Today is May 1st, right? On May 1st, you should be able to look at the calendar and say, okay, I got to set up my priorities for my house. This is what a good steward do when he works and he has gathered uh, money and resources. He set up priorities for how the month will go the month ahead. Don't wait till they get here and say, uh-oh, this is happening. It's not going to happen bad for you if you make preparations ahead of time. So, uh, twenty Proverbs 24 and 27, read that. It's about how you're going to set your priorities. What you're going to do for your month of living expense is look at your calendar and all those bills that you receive, I set mine to the side. And what I, what I do is I take a day, maybe a day like a boring day out of the week when I don't have too much to do. And I say, okay, this is the date that this is due. And I put that on my calendar. You might want to get a separate calendar book to keep up with your household resources and what you're doing with it, how you're turning it over. Look at the day the, the bill is due. If the utility bill is due on the 24th or the 15th or whatever, write that down. Your credit card, if that's due in whatever minimum payment, write that down. If you want to pay more, then that's up to you. Write that down. Look at that. Setting your priorities. Looking at the calendar. Looking at the month out. 30 days out. Every first of the month, look at the whole 30 days. Just like you get ready to plan for two weeks of cooking and eating and prepping, you're going to plan for a whole 30 days of budgeting your money. Now, do a budget, which is step number two. When you're doing a budget, use the calendar and the dates. You already set your priorities. You already say it. Now, it's May. I know I'm going to have to pay some bills. This is setting up your priorities. Get yourself, your mind, to think. You know, you don't want to be worried about it. Okay, I, I know this has got to be paid. Let me write it down. So, your budget, which is number two, use your calendar. Write your budget. Now, what I do, I normally do a simple budget. Whatever those dates on that calendar down, I do. You can do auto pay. You can say, okay, I'm going to automatically have this come out and go to this vendor so it's paid and I won't have to worry about it. If you don't want to go to the bank to do auto pay, then get your checkbook out and write, write the date that that bill is due. And then you got to run back and forth to the post office and buy stamps and do that sort of thing. But the best thing to do is write it down. You can go to the bank and do auto pay and it'll come out on that date. Um, the other thing with your budget is what I do. You're going to do a percentage of your money. Like you, you know you're going to on, on number two with your budget. Take that 10% tithe off, either the second or third week in a month, pay your tithes. Give 10% back to charity or back to the church. If you don't have a church, give it to a charity, charitable cause. The other 10 or 15%, pay yourself and set up a savings for yours. Put yours in the savings, your 10 or 15%. Take another 15%. You can even do 20% and keep cash on hand. Cash on hand is what you keep in the cash box of the house. You keep this 15% of your money that you earn for the month. 
just for if I run out of something, I need to go run out and get it. You know, if you didn't didn't shop right and didn't do all that, what if you need to cook a meal and you need to go down there and get a couple of things? You got a couple of little cash dollars in your pocket. What if your kid needs some money? Keep 15% of cash hanging around just for you to spend. Okay? If you want to do 20%, you can. Now, if you do 20%, you're only going to have 45% left. Now, if you do 15%, you got 50% left. But you already spent 20. You know, you're going to spend 50% of your money on your paying yourself charity and cash on hand. Keeping extra money in the house for things you need. Things you need. And then you got the other 15%. You got 15% for you in your savings. Pay yourself. 15% for cash on hand. That's 30. 10% for charity. And 10% for something else. I don't know what that was for. Anyway. You got 50% of these little small things over here. Then you got 50% to cover those dates you got on that calendar. Now, out of that 50%, spend 25 on small things like my utilities. If I got a credit card payment. If I got uh, some kind of internets and things. Then take the other 25% and set it aside. Because with that 25%, you're going to hit your mortgage and your rent. But with that 25% out of that money you got, when the first of the month of uh, June come, you say, I got 25% of my mortgage or my rent. You add another 50%. To that mortgage because you're going to need a big amount on the first say for instance the first of the month come you're going to hit that mortgage with 50 percent my budget is 150 percent of your income but the extra the extra money which is adding up is on the first of the next month you're going to take the 50 percent right there and pay your your mortgage or your big part of your shelter and then you're going to start the whole thing over again throughout the, throughout the, uh, say for instance, you get your first check on June. Take half of that whole check and put it with that 25% and pay your mortgage. See how I just saved you a lot of money? You didn't know I, you could do that kind of math. I'm going to put it down here so you can better understand. But you're going to give 10% on the next week of your check to charity, to your church. Then, you're going to take another 10 or 15 percent. You're going to pay yourself. Put it to the side in savings. Then, you're going to take out another 15 percent, and it's going to be cash on hand. That's your cash box for your house. I'm, I'm going to take this out from my cash box. Between the first and the second week, you're going to take 50% of your income for two whole weeks. Take 50% and do these things. When you get to the third week, you got some things marked off on your calendar for May. You're going to tap into that 25% on the third week. You're going to pay the utilities and the credit card and the internet if you got all these three things. Most people got an internet or utilities and some credit card. Hit that with 25%. Take the other 25%, which is the other half of the 50%, set it to the side. Because on the first of the month, you're going to hit 50% of that first check with that 25 you save. And bam, send out your rent or your mortgage or whatever. Now, another way you can also do is set up a separate bank account or a separate way to save for your mortgage. And take 25% out of this account or whatever your income go. So I'm going to take this whole 25% and place it to the side so that I know I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to spend it. Put it on a separate card that you don't touch or a separate account. And say, this is just for my mortgage or just for my rent. I got this 25% right here. 
when the first come, that first check, bam, I'm going to take 50% and put it over here. Boom, I'm going to pay my rent. I'm going to pay my mortgage. I'm showing you how to pay your bills. This is the Bible way. And that's your budget. Now, that's number two. Number three, well, number three was take 50% and save 25 and then 25% on your small bills. So, and number four, well, actually, number three was, okay, number four is avoid debt. Avoid debt to get out of debt. Proverbs 22 and 7, the rich man, the rich ruler, and the, the rich ruler over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the rich. Avoid debt. While you're trying to save through the month, you done budgeted out, right? You're trying to save through the month, avoid debt. Don't go out and buy nothing extra. Now, when the holidays come, you done put 15 or 10% in a savings account. If you didn't have to spend it for nothing, then you can say, every week, I done saved in the savings 10%, or I done saved every week 15%. For four weeks. When you get to a holiday, if you need to spend that money you save for yourself, go buy yourself some because you save. That's how you avoid that. Don't get to the day and say, I'm going to take all the money I got and go out here and buy this or buy that. I'm just out of whim. Just whew, I'm just going out here and buy something big. You know, if you're going to make a major purchase, this is the best way to avoid that. Pray about it two or three times research it and set a goal to get it don't just come up and say i'm going to take i'm going to wreck my savings or wreck my process because i want to get this big purchase set a goal when you set goals you avoid debt if you want to buy a car if you want to buy a tv if you want to buy a expensive watch a ring something that costs a little extra money Give yourself two to three months. Give yourself a three-month goal. Three months to six months, however much it costs. In six months, I want to buy a car, or I want to buy this, or I want to buy that. If it's a real big purchase, it might take you 12 months to 18 months. Set a goal for big, big purchases so you can avoid debt. Don't go out and get a, a brand new credit card to make a big purchase. Because you are trying to, every month, pay your credit card down. When you got these things wrote on the calendar, pay extra on your credit cards so you can pay them off. Now, if you get your credit cards paid down to like a third where you barely owe any money on it, and then you want to get another credit card, get another credit card and start using that one a, a little bit. Because these other ones are paid off almost. Or pay the other ones off. And get you an extra one if you need it, but only keep it for an emergency. Don't try to say, well, I'm going to give me another credit card because I want to make a big purchase. Keep it for an emergency because this is opening up your spending limit. You got all these cards. You got cards paid off, and then you get another car. You got a big spending limit, so your credit is increased. So when you want to go out and make a purchase, you can, and you're going to get a lower interest rate. But don't just say, well, I'm going to run. I'm going to get, get out of this. I'm gonna get, you know. Do it how you do it slowly because if you got an open credit, you can buy you a house or a car at a lower interest rate. So I'm teaching you how to get out of debt, avoid debt, and increase your credit, increase your spending limit, and keep it there. Don't say, oh, I got this big amount. I'm going to go wreck it. I'm going to go spend. No, mm -mm. take your time, honey. The next thing, diversify, diversify diversify read ecclesiastes 5 13 through 4 learn to reduce risk as you grow old so put your money into various investments not just one thing that's one chunk over here mm -mm. put it into various different investments get you an investment person at your bank you can get on motley food you can get on uh any type of these little uh, investment entities and look at what's going on but if you don't know how to discern it get somebody who know investments at your bank get a broker get somebody else that you can talk to and talk to various people to get various 
you know, various ideas and then, you know, kind of sum, summarize and pray on it what you think and diversify what you have. You know, you don't want to put everything in one, one window when you're growing old. Number five, make long-term, make a long-term plan. Plan for two years out. Meaning, what do I want to do in two more years? Is there something, some type of purchase I think I want to make? If it's a purchase you want, I want to buy a home. I want to buy a building. I want to buy some land. If it's something big, start making plans now to figure out how to get this goal into view. After you've done all your budgeting and your prioritizing, go to the bank and talk to your banker and say, listen, in a couple of years, I'm interested in doing this, that, and the other. And they will help you set up new goals. Okay, and after you make your plan for two years, even look five years out. What do I want to do in five years? If you don't want to look that far, just make it for two years out at a time. Okay, so those are my tips on uh, shepherding your household financially. I'll put the tips below and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great evening. See, I'm chewing gum. I chew gum at night and I drink water because gum helps get rid of hunger, believe it or not. You know, a low sugar gum, not real, not real sweet. You don't want to be wrecking your, uh, your fillings, but low sugar gum or suck on a hose or some type of a lemon drop or, you know, something mild. I like to suck on some of either just chew gum and drink water and you don't have to be snacking, you know. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.